On today's tourist tip, we look to the Asiatic country of Russia. Despite its rather checkered political and socio-economic history, or perhaps due to it, Russia has produced a vast array of interesting technologies and iconic exports. The Matryoshka doll, vodka, and the AK-47 are all notably Russian exports, while Western consumers may want to steer clear of any vehicular or ideological products. On the more catastrophic end of the spectrum, Russian engineers have been experimenting with mixing antiquated technology in new applications. The same technology that was used thousands of years ago to create the aforementioned Matryoshka doll has been applied to the artful science of personal storage equipment to disastrous results. In an educational software model currently in development titled Escape from Tarkov, researchers have developed a simulation of the intended result of this disastrous experiment. The actual result was a Chernobyl-like incident which nearly caused a gravitational cascade event, the exterior backpack's mass nearly reaching infinity. Хорошо, все параметры стабильны. Добавляйте еще один для прикола. This incident has caused speculative investments of Russian-made backpacks to decline worldwide due to rumors of persisting illegal Matryoshka technology. The region of Norvinsk has been rendered a disaster zone, the only remaining human inhabitants being scavengers, criminals, and a persistent NGO PMC presence, causing chaos and instability to radiate out from this war-torn region. Hey, don't believe those Western propagandists. Tarkov is beautiful this time of year. Oh, sure, maybe some fallout, some scabs, but hey, you can make an omelet without breaking a few skulls, huh? So bring your AKs, bring your iodine. Welcome to the happiest place on Earth. Welcome to Tarkov. This video has been sponsored by Tonus Gaming. Tonus is part of a brand new perk level on my Patreon called Say It and I'll Play It. All patrons on the $7 level and above get to tell me what game they want me to review. You, be it Bad Rats or Metal Gear 5. Tonus asked me to review Escape from Tarkov, a survival looting shooter game from Russian developer Battlestate Games. Now, I've had a tough time with survival games, even though they seem perfect for me. I love tactical games, I love games that provide tension, and I am fast becoming a fan of games that make you lose, and make you lose hard. Survival games seem perfect for that. I know what they can bring, a feeling of accomplishment, of defying all the odds to bring that load of loot home the tension while crawling along a sewer pipe, trying to hear the noises that mean all clear, but each twig snapped in the forest and each echoing gunshot bring your heartbeat to your ears, secretly hoping the gunfight will come to you so you can prove yourself and get some better loot, and dreading the roar of machine gun fire that would sound your doom. That tension is something rare in a gaming market that is so addicted to easy victories, unearned reward. It is so rare to actually lose and to feel that loss. Although it's less rare now than it used to be, around three or four years ago, there has been a resurgence, particularly in the indie market, of roguelikes and side-scrolling games that have hardcore mechanics and a numerically smaller but industry upheaving resurgence in the shooter market. The ones that have done this, Daisy, Rust, and now the Battle Royale genre, I don't have too much attraction towards. These games are huge now. PUBG and Fortnite, like Minecraft before them, have created their own little cottage industry. One could just become a Fortnite YouTuber and rake in the dollary dues. But I haven't even approached either for a multitude of reasons. Daisy initially turned me off with the clickish nature of the multiplay, forming a society in a zombie-affected wasteland works so much better when everyone around you isn't a total ass clown. Do we want to make friends with him and then like betray him? That would be pretty funny. Yeah, let's be let's betray him. The battle royale games seem to add more structure, and you might think that this would attract me, but battle royale has its own idiosyncrasies that have kept me from playing. The random nature of the 
loot plus the competitive nature of the game seem like they would make me rage out hard. The skill ceiling is also really high at this point, and Battle Royale seems to be a genre where the winning move is not to play. You kind of want to avoid other players in conflicts as much as possible. Let the other players resolve themselves and try to win not by being the most skilled player, but by being the best opportunist. I don't know, maybe I'm just being an old man, but it seems like an odd choice of design strategies for a tournament game. It's successful, holy god is it ever successful, but the mixture that Battle Royale is generally turns me off. Getting into these games would be more of a chore for me than I really have time for, and my prospects of enjoying an open world, no holds barred survival game seemed pretty low. That is, until Escape from Tarkov. Now what does this game have different from DayZ or Battle Royale? You're still in an open environment where people want to kill you and take your stuff. There are still ambiguously friendly players who may want to befriend you and may just want to shoot you in the back, and in general you kind of want to avoid other people since conflict runs you the risk of losing you that nice loot you may have gotten, not to mention anything you had on you when you came in. Progression is hard and slow, and there are a ton of highly skilled players who will retard that progress even further, and loss is permanent. But where other survival games didn't have enough of a carrot to me, Tarkov has a really really big carrot. The first thing I heard about this game was from Tonus, who whispered sweet nothings into my ear about it. Hey, you like SWAT? Well, I'm playing this game where if you double tap reload, you'll reload faster, but you'll drop the empty mag instead of keeping it. Yeah, you keep your empty magazines. So why would you keep it around? Well, you have a persistent inventory that survives from play session to play session, and you can buy and sell items from traders, so every action you take is not only done for tactical expediency, but also with your economy in mind. Oh, and you have to have load-bearing equipment. You can't just load magazines out of your backpack. You have to have them on your LBEs or in your pockets for easy delivery. More and more, little tidbits of tactical info came into the periphery of my knowledge, like the smell of a prime roast wafting towards the nose of a starving man. Oh, did you know? Some of the guys who made Stalker made this, and it's a lot like Stalker, too. Inventory management, James. Bountiful tracts of inventory management. No HUD, James. No ammo counter. You have to check your magazines manually. Oh, yes, there is a difference between NATO and Warsaw Pact ammo. You bet there is. Not just 7.2x51 versus 7.2x39, but different loads, James. They count the powder charge, James. Steel core versus lead core, James. Ballistic coefficients, James. Your money takes up inventory space, James. Progressive speed and stance adjustments with the mouse wheel, James. Oh my god, where can I buy this game? For the love of assault rifle, Jesus, take my money! This tactical accuracy is exactly the carrot I needed to get me excited in this genre, and it is the perfect fit for a one you're done survival game, so let me at it. But of course, my realism starved shooter fan, but of course. And how much Tarkov can Sir afford? The $45 base package? Or would you like to drop $150 on this bad boy? We're selling inventory space, gentlemen. 30 slots, 30 slots for $90 or much, much more. That plus a bunch of high tier loot that would probably be wasted on a noob like myself. So maybe I'll just get the base package. I don't even know if I'm gonna like this game. You never know, a game in early beta based on the Unity engine. I mean, call me cynical or maybe just cautious, but isn't there the possibility that there could be some technical problems? I mean, just like a few, you know, maybe.
shooting me anytime now. What the fuck is going on? Okay, multiplayer stalker, I get it, great idea, but did you have to copy the janky early release too? Battlestate even has that one guy who worked on stalker. He must have pulled up in his Lada to their studio with a briefcase full of hard drives in one hand and a bottle of Stolich Nye on the other yelling, Hey you guys, I brought all bugs from X-Ray Engine, you want peek? Holy God, does this ever feel like a multiplayer stalker game and that's not just the atmosphere or the character portraits or the nitty gritty equipment choices but the general jankiness, the slow loading times, the stuttering, the aimbot AI, the hit detection. Yes, despite Battlestate's insistence that Tarkov is in a beta period, its current state will be more accurately described as a late alpha. A pre-release, performance not indicative of final product, no, I get that. But it is the first objective reason why you may not want to buy Tarkov right now. I have heard from many people that phrase ubiquitous with most early access releases, and full releases from EA, Ubisoft, and Bethesda, they're working on it. Combined by, it's better than it used to be. Holy crap, really? It was worse? How bad was it running before? All right, all right, to be fair to Battlestate, they have been working on it, and it is better than it used to be. In fact, I'm very aware that the .90 patch just released with bug fixes and lag improvements on the top docket. I've not had a chance to try out the new improvements, so this one patch might have fixed every single one of the issues I mentioned previously. Any review done on this game is going to be a dated project until they reach their final release. I know, I know! I'm just giving you my honest assessment on how it was when I played it, not how it might be and not how it might improve in the future. To be even fairer to Battlestate, Tarkov is a very ambitious project. They are trying to build a competitive shooter on the Unity engine, something that I haven't seen done successfully too many times. What Tarkov is now will apparently just be the framework for something bigger. Right now, there's only one game mode, Raid, in which you spawn into one of several medium to large sized maps, and you have to, at the very least, reach the other side of the map in order to escape the raid with all of your collected loot. The raid game mode will be only part of a wider eventual experience. Ultimately, they plan to have an open world where all of these locations are stitched together into a large daisy style main map. They also want to have an arena, a story mode, whatever that entails in an open world multiplayer survival shooter, and a later single player game release called Russia 2028, which will be built on the backbone that Tarkov creates. That is all immensely cool stuff, and I am totally for supporting the devs on the work they have done so far. Hell, I bought the Edge of Darkness pack, the $150 version, you know? But, but because I spent, or donated $150, part of my consumer brain feels like I'm buying a product while the reward tiers and payment structure feel like a Kickstarter. The only unique reward that people who spend more than a retail game price for Tarkov at this time will get is, like I said before, extra stash inventory space and a larger gamma container, as well as some loot that's going to be very transitory given the nature of the game. The gamma container is more interesting. Everyone who buys the game normally just gets an alpha container, within which you can place loot, and no matter what happens during the course of the raid, even if you die, you get back whatever was in that case. This was actually another selling point of the game, that there was some precious reserved area that people could never touch, even if you died. If you got enough gold chains or whatever, maybe your run would be neutral upon death, rather than just a loss. The alpha container everybody gets is 2x2, two two, and you can grind through some quests for a couple of hours, maybe more, and unlock a bigger 4x2 stack which is just about big enough to hold some of the more compact assault rifles. The Gamma Container higher tier supporters get is 3x3, just about big enough to fit a moderate range of smaller assault rifles and shotguns that have a foldable stock. So you're paying 90 plus extra dollars for five extra tiles of Invincis space and a bigger stash, almost as if they were renting out an easily changeable game parameter to people willing to shell out. Yes, 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 I know you're not buying a game, you're supporting the devs. Eventually, the people who paid more for Tarkov will be given... hugs? 
You can't really give people who pay more, more stuff, because that would be pay to win. And even though I don't like the whole inventory space rental scheme they have now, while it sits very carefully on that balance point, it is not pay to win in my estimation. Again, if the devs get done what they say they want to get done, then I will consider it money well spent. They have been steadily improving the raid game mode, and despite the issues the game has now, it's better than it was before. If we can see gains like this in the closed beta, that's a good sign for this running closer to how a more competitive shooter might. And with a realistic game with this much running with each and every one of your lives, I would say that's essential for most people to even consider picking this one up and not totally trashing their PCs after a few death stutters in mid-combat. Not that you won't probably have to trash your PC anyways before you start running Tarkov, because while it's not a visual beast, it definitely does not run well on older machines. I've got a semi-not-potato running this thing, and I really wish I had a better rig, because every frame is precious in this world of one-hit kills and loot loss. Not that it's going to matter in the long run anyways, because the game is just objectively laggy right now. Even with a top tier rig, you're still going to be losing lives to lag. Not that the lag is the only unfair thing in Tarkov. The second objective reason one might not want to buy Tarkov is also one of the main reasons some might seek it out. This is an unapologetically hardcore experience, one that seems almost designed as a noob trap from the ground up, a side ubiquitous shooter skill that would translate well to any FPS, even experienced shooter players will have an uphill climb adjusting to Tarkov. On an immediate level, you will notice all that stuff that gave me a tactiboner just from seeing them in the trailers. No HUD, no ammo counter, a million different kinds of bullets, even in the same caliber, but aside from that, even stuff like, can I just tell you how adjusted I have become to having a minimap? Almost every game, as far back as Doom, in any kind of traversable environment, has had an in-game map, almost all of which will show your precise location on it. It's a handicap that has become a standard feature. What's more, in games like GTA, with massive game worlds, I become almost more focused on the map than I am on driving or shooting. Taking away the minimap is an incredible immersion tool in open world games. You have to pay attention to your surroundings a lot more, and you have to really get to know your neighborhood. In Tarkov, you can buy a map to bring along, but it's really just in order to choose your spawning location. When you actually get on the ground, you'll find it doesn't track your location, so you're stuck swapping back and forth from the map. <laughs> okay, I'm next to a tree, and there's a tree over there. Okay, maybe it's this tree right here. Okay, I'm lost. <laughs> I found it very useful going to the Tarkov wiki, which you should honestly just have running in the background anyways. I downloaded some of the in-game and user-made maps and I ran them on my laptop next to me. After a few games of, okay, there's a cabin and there's a fence and there's a factory in the background, so I must be here. I started to get a hang on the maps. Learning this information for myself on my own was like a lot of things in Tarkov, as challenging as it was immersive and rewarding. Other noob traps in the game were less charming. The traders and the quest system are exploring very poorly, and you are left on your own to understand exactly what it is the game wants from you. And this creates metas that the game's community knows about, but you as a new player don't and may never figure out on your own. For example, during the .83 patch, there was an early quest from Prapor, where he asks you to kill three AI scavengers on customs and bring back three of a specific model of shotgun. The scavs, the AI looters who spawn in game, have fairly random gear. These particular shotguns may not show up quickly or easily. Fortunately for you, another trader, Skier, scales the shotguns that Prepor wants, and even though it'll cost you a little bit, the trade-off between getting the quest done and the quest's loot compensates for that. However, there's a typo. Prapor asks for MP133 shotguns, and Skier sells MR133 shotguns. If you didn't have someone telling you, no, seriously, those are the right shotguns, you might think that even though you heard you could do this, you also know that this is a game where you can get 5.45 by 39, 
BT, BP, BS, FMJ, HP, PP, PRS, PS, SPT, and US versions of the same bullet, all of which are considered different items. They won't stack with each other, and they have different statistics. You might be forgiven for thinking that a single letter change would indicate an entirely different item, and be hesitant to buy those shotguns. After all, you're spending money that you might never see again on a quest that you don't know you can complete because there's this typo. These kinds of noob traps go on from there. Many other quests that actually have you go out and raid for are incredibly vague in their description and require intimate map knowledge to figure out. On the back end, traders need reputation improvement in order to level them up so you can buy more and better stuff from them. And many of them require that you buy and sell a certain amount of currency with them as well in order to reach those levels. However, not all traders need reputation improvement and some traders deal in entirely different currencies, sometimes multiple currencies. Different items have different worth to different traders. You'll want to save hard drives from raids because you can trade them for backpacks from Peacekeeper, but not necessarily DVD drives because you can't really do anything with those. You'll want to make sure that you break down all your weapons before selling them because selling the mods separate from the receiver of the gun nets a bigger profit. You can also do that for quests. Just skeletonize any weapons you want to get rid of in general. And always sell dog tags to therapists because she gives you a higher price. These are all things you would not necessarily know or figure out without being told or being guided through them. And I like when a game trusts its players to figure out the mechanics without shoving them down their throats. But in some cases, like Tarkov, this creates an even wider gulf between experienced players and newbies in a game where that gulf is already pretty massive. I mean, these guys have been playing the game for hundreds, if not thousands of hours. And despite the multiple server wipes that have occurred during this period of beta, resetting everyone's equipment back to zero, you will routinely be pitted against people who have a skill and equipment gulf that is totally insurmountable to new players. This was something that turned me off from DayZ, Rust, and the other open loot games. The long list of stories about new players trying to spawn in, get their bearings, and being killed from a mile off by players they couldn't even see just so those players could dig another notch in their rifle stocks and collect that one more can of beans from another set of hapless newbies. Rinse, wash, and repeat, but don't give up yet, newbies. Maybe you'll make it past the spawn, get geared, and then you can be that one guy on the hilltop raining death upon the ungeared spawns. There's a... There's a life goal for you. Now, while Tarkov does have this inherently unfair gear imbalance, there are several things about its design that help to alleviate the worst aspects of this. Rather than having a large world running on a single server, where people who happen to spawn in before you will have a head start, Tarkov currently operates as a set of smaller maps, each instanced from each other. These instances will have a cap of around 12 players or so, and assuming the system works right, which can be a stretch for Tarkov, everyone will spawn in at the same time at somewhat distant spawn points. It is more difficult for people to camp spawns because they don't know who may have spawned where, and you have plenty of time to leave your spawning area before other players arrive. There's also the objective-based nature of Tarkov. Each raid has a time limit, so you have to find what you want to find and then escape from the map within like 45 minutes or so. Geared players can't necessarily set up camp and make a designated spot their own personal kill zone for hours on end. They'll probably miss out on the best loot themselves and they'll have to pick up and leave just like everybody else before the time limit runs out or risk losing their loot altogether. Of course, people will still congregate to areas where the best loot spawns, assuming they know where that is, and dickishly camp known extraction points. The AI scavs spawn in these areas as well, and unlike AI enemies in some other games, Scavs are no joke. More often than not, you will be killed by scavs rather than players. This isn't necessarily due to them being just smart, determined AI with good weapons. No, they for sure cheat. Now, it is difficult to make AI in a game fair, especially a game where players may have anything from a sharp stick to a high-powered sniper assault ghost gun with 30 caliber clip magazines and aim-assisted rhino bullet baby killer rounds. 
You would want to have AI that would be challenging and rewarding to the full spectrum of players. And hey, maybe that's impossible, but I'll tell you what's not impossible is make an AI that can't one-shot you from 200 meters away with a pistol, see you through bushes and trees, shoot through cover ranging from the anticipatedly permeable wood to the implausibly permeable Soviet-era concrete blocks or entire structures, and who can magically soak up multiple shotgun blasts to the chest or face before turning around and sneezing you to death. Again, I understand that you might want to have both newbies and experienced players against these guys, and you want to make sure you have a consistent threat, but at this point, the AI is anything but consistent. At this point, it's not exactly economical to bring your best equipment, especially on solo raids. It's almost better to bring the Taz pipe gun and scoot around one-shotting scabs in their precious face hitboxes, and if one of them one-shots you from across the map, Meh, it only cost you 10,000 rubles to get into that match in the first place. Now, there would be a simple solution to both of these problems, that of being wiped out by overpowered human players or cheating AI scavs, and that would be to have a matchmaking system based around some sort of loot score plus player level. You know, assign every item of loot a point value and then match players around some sort of bracketing system for what they brought into the match. That way, less geared players would be facing off against each other. You wouldn't have as many hatchlings running with squads of fully equipped players, and the scabs would be leveled to provide both a stiff challenge and better loot for the more seasoned players. Then you would want to bring your better loot because you might need it for the better scabs, and you would be getting better stuff in return. To reference Stalker, there were certainly some areas that had tougher enemies with tougher gear that you then got to loot when you killed them. It made the game more of an RPG and more of a linear experience. I understand that this goes somewhat counter to the entire multiplayer survival concept that Tarkov is attempting here, that you will run into situations that you can't necessarily plan for. To have any kind of bracketing system might betray the concept that Tarkov is based around now, which creates immersion and tension for some, and immense frustration for others. Battlestate seems to be a company that doesn't really give a damn whether the game is approachable or not. I mean, come on, what have I been talking about for the last 15 minutes? It's that severe mountain climb that makes Tarkov compelling, that gives you a thrill every time you come into a match. Maybe this will be a milk run and I'll get a lot of loot, or maybe I'll run into a whole squad of tryhards halfway in and lose everything. So despite the compelling thought of a more fair matchmaking system, it might not work with the kind of game Tarkov is. That is, the kind of game it is now. Right now, Tarkov has been resetting player stats and equipment every major patch. People who have leveled and geared up get set back every few weeks or months. This artificially keeps the game's balance somewhat level. Even if there are some tryhards with the best gear running around, there aren't that many of them, and they won't be doing it for long. Assuming the game leaves its current beta state, I don't see consistent server resets being a part of the game's landscape. You'll want to keep your loot and your skill points, and right now there are a bunch of guys who have gone from level 1 to level 40 like 5 to 7 odd times. They know the maps like the back of their hands, and if you buy the game on launch day, or heaven forbid a week or so afterwards, you will be trapped with these people. It will be rare to find a server without one or two or six players who will, through their hundreds of hours of playtime and now permanent and constantly growing stashes of top-notch loot, will be almost entirely invulnerable to lower level players. The game won't just be inaccessible, it will be broken. If Battlestate don't think about matchmaking sometime soon, they're not going to make any damn money from a new player base when it comes time for release. Hell, test out a matchmaking system on Factory for now. It's a really close range map and plays in a lot of ways like a more normal shooter. Instant action, lots of shooting, not so much a drawn out experience like the other maps are. Have the loot tables dynamically react to the player's loot bracket so you can't just do hatchet runs and make a ton of money. More risk, more reward. Not having even a rudimentary matchmaking system in play at this point in development, where they are apparently in beta, 
is rather symptomatic of a lot of things in the game being poorly implemented or missing altogether. I mentioned performance earlier, and while I'm sure that some of the stuttering and frame drops, particularly in combat when you need your frames the most, is due to my rig's age, I have heard that these are relatively universal issues. Even on the lowest settings, frame rate can still slow to a crawl when you're shooting or getting shot at. The netcode alone seems like it's severely lacking. I want to show some footage here exclusively of other people. Streamers, higher level friends, just to show that this is not just on my end. This is a Tarkov problem, and yeah, it's in beta, it's not ready, well, it kind of sounds like they're looking to release this soon. The beta is open now, open beta, coming shortly, and I don't know if they're gonna have time to fix these issues. What the fuck is going on?! It may have sounded like I just spent the last 20 minutes or so trying to unsell you this game. And that's not really it. I just felt like with any review of this game, I would have to elucidate the exact problems in it and tell you what you might be getting into. I came into Tarkov knowing almost nothing, and despite that long, laundry list of problems I just spouted off, Tarkov is still a really engaging game. If people were looking for a more competitive stalker, I mean... This is it, flaws and all. The looting is extremely satisfying. The tension in each and every raid is palpable every time. The gunfights could really use improvement, but when they work, they are thrilling and synergize with every other mechanic in the game. The model they've developed with rifle-armed scavs, playing with others, the looting and damage systems, the plethora of options from your weapon customization to movement to equipment customization is practically unparalleled in a single game. Game. If Tarkov released in a more fully playable state, with only a pinch more handholding, a little better optimization, a few more features to keep the newbie sheep from the poop socking wolves, Tarkov could be the holy grail to survival game fans, post apocalypse fans, tactical shooter fans, metro fans, stalker fans, arma fans. I mean, seriously, this game could be big. A lot of the appeal of Tarkov to me isn't necessarily how it is now but what it could be a month, a year down the road. As to whether you should buy it and support the devs now, well, that's why I was trying to unsell you the game. For me, it was a no-brainer, instant sell. I even bought the special shiny edition, spent like 150 bucks on the damn thing. But there are things about the game, not just stuff that isn't finished, but the insistence on a hardcore experience, the lack of approachability, the technical problems that might be in the game forever that you might not know about just coming in, that are all systemic roadblocks to a more general audience. Battlestate are also not accepting refunds at the moment, and they've also been in a rolling battle with some parts of their fan base about certain features and what they're telling the fans and what they're not saying. If my video makes you want to wait for a later release or a full release when everything should be finished, then I've done my job here. I don't want to needlessly fanboy over something that is almost designed to avoid mainstream appeal, but if you want to pick up the game, hey, I'd be down for a round or two with you. Just until I get sick of dying, that is. Tarkov is an unapologetically realistic and tactical experience, and if you can get past its foibles, you might find a gem among the growing crowd of increasingly similar Battle Royale style shooters. It's a really cool game, and if you have the patience for it, Tarkov can reward in engaging and subtle ways. Bringing back that full haul and unloading your bags into your stash is one of the most satisfying feelings I've felt in gaming, just as being blindsided and killed with no explanation after a 20 minute slow plod through the woods is one of the worst. It's not a game that finds balance, it's a game that revels in extremes. And if you can handle that imbalanced ride, Tarkov might just be for you. Just don't say I didn't warn you. I wanted to give a quick thanks to Peasemaker for being a part of this video and for helping guide me around the world of Tarkov. You should definitely check him out if you want some more Russian goodness in your life. The link to his channel is in the description. Also, thanks to Der Moosen High Man Chesterton, and again, Tonus Gaming, for doing the same. I also wanted to thank Random Kenny for helping me with some technical issues with the edit. He's awesome. You should check out his channel, which is filmed to the brim with some really well-edited Payday 2 videos.